Hi there. On this episode of Talk Around Town, we're going to talk streets and street repairs. Hi, I'm David Gassaway with Talk Around Town. We're here today with Dan Kamara, our streets manager, and we're going to talk about street repairs. Thanks for joining me, Dan. Yeah, glad to be here. How are you doing today? Excellent. Yourself? Oh, I'm doing wonderful. Um, so one of the things that uh, we get a lot of questions from the public on is, is about streets. And you guys do a ton of work to keep our streets uh, in as best a shape as we can. Tell us a little bit about how you guys do that. What types of repairs do you do? You know, what type of projects does the streets team do? Well, the streets department's comprised of two teams. There's an arterial and collector crew. And they typically do trench paving, which is essentially removing damaged wheel path asphalt and paving it back. And then they also assist in the special events. We also have a residential crew that's funded by Measure P and they do targeted repairs in the older neighborhoods. Okay. Those are a little bit more intrusive and extensive repairs where they actually dig down, removing typically three to five inches of asphalt and 13 to 17 inches of aggregate base wow. and they rebuild the road section. So they're a little bit slower uh, as far as movement. It's essentially rebuilding a road piece by piece. Okay. And so when you say trench paving and mm -hmm. wheel paths, so two asphalt strips going down, yeah. um, not exactly in the middle of the road, but sort of right where your wheels would yeah. be when you're driving down the street. So that's trench paving. Correct. Now, why do we do trench paving as opposed to say, just you know, ripping off that whole section or doing an overlay on that whole section? The cost, it, it all comes down to cost. And as a maintenance crew for the public contract code, we cannot do an overlay. Mm -hmm. um, so if we were to take out the entire lane, it would be way too expensive. We're just trying to get the most bang for the buck and take out the portion of asphalt where your car is gonna travel on. Okay. That, that takes the majority of the damage from okay. vehicles, from okay. trucks and buses. And so overall on the roadway then, I assume that that sort of makes the roadway last longer, um, you know, over years. And of course, you know, with gas tax revenues decline kind of year after year, cars are getting more fuel efficient. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are driving more and more electric cars, right? So, you know, they're not paying that gas tax that normally funds that type of maintenance, right? And ideally we would do that work in conjunction with our surface treatment program. We would take out the damaged asphalt, repair everything, and then resurface the entire roadway, uh, which gives it a little bit more structure. But in that, you're going to also get new striping and markings. So it'll essentially be like a brand new roadway that'll last uh, seven to 10 years. Okay, great, that, that's excellent. So we're, we're trying to be as cost effective as possible and maintaining our roads for as long as we can on the, on the limited monies we have. What other types of uh, funds do we utilize for our roadway maintenance? Gas tax, Measure P, I believe SB1. Okay. How do we make the decision to go from doing, say, the trench paving to making the decision up, oh, yeah, we're, we're going to have to just totally pave this road or replace this road? It's based on the condition of the roadway. There's actually a lot of things that go into it. The location of the roadway, the average daily trips for vehicles, um, the stakeholders, are there utility repairs that need to be done? Is there a school there? There's many, many factors that go into that decision. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Uh, as we're kind of taking and weighing all those factors, how do we decide what roadways and when? And is there sort of a comprehensive or overall plan on how we make those decisions and where we're going to target the repairs year after year? We have a Measure P think tank group, and we get together and we discuss things and make those decisions. Okay. And, and do we sort of segment the city out into zones that we're taking a look at? So roads are given a grade called a pavement condition index as required by the MTC. Our roads are rated every two years, so it's a four-year cycle. Every two years will be residential, and then the following two years will be arterials and collectors. Okay. And based on that number, there's an industry standard of what should be done. Um, there's a, a multitude of factors, but the quick answer is it's based on the pavement condition index. Okay, so the roads in a worse condition kind of move up over time in that, and then now they're at the top of the list, now, now they get the repairs. Yeah, okay, great. Um, are there other uh, small types of repairs that we do throughout the year? I mean, I know we just came off of an incredibly rainy season and uh, potholes, right? Potholes are a big issue. 
Um, so how do we go about repairing potholes and are there others of those smaller types of repairs that we do at, at some frequency? Pothole repair is a huge industry and every day there's a new innovation. We use probably a half a dozen different products from burn down products, cold fill products. Uh, we continually try new things and, and test their longevity and see which gets the best bang for the buck. Um, sometimes it's using hot asphalt, sometimes it's cold patch, sometimes we use a thermoplastic material called chip fill. And, and is that th those different types of materials based on the, the, the size of the pothole? Uh, a real big wheel buster out there uses a certain type versus if it's a small little pothole? Correct, correct. Uh, so the crew that we have currently cracking on East Tabor, uh, they're using a thermoplastic material called chip fill. Uh, there's little holes in the roadway that the service treatment wouldn't be sufficient to fix, but they fill them in with a burn down material. They're not big enough to dig up. Uh, it's just the top layer of the previous uh, overlay that happened on that road. Okay, now what does burn down mean? You put the material in a hole and then you take a torch and liquefy it. Okay. And it's essentially self-leveled. Melts into it. And then hardens up. Okay, okay. Now what about, I, I've noticed um, on some streets, they've got these, you know, like little like hairline cracks going along them. Is that a special type of treatment that we do? That would actually get the most cost-effective road repair that we can do, which is crack sealing. You can fill in cracks for about a dollar a lineal foot, and what you're doing is protecting what's underneath the roadway. What happens if you don't fill the cracks in? It'll start with a crack, and then once water moisture gets in there, it pumps out the base of the roadway, and then the roadway starts to depress and crack and break up, and then you have potholes. Okay, so doing crack seals, which is cost-effective, fairly cheap, do that to prevent the potholes in the future, and I'm sure we do our best to go around and catch as many of those as possible. Yes, yeah, we have 13 people for approximately 700 miles of roadway. So wow. Roughly, it's 50-something miles per individual here. Wow, okay. It's a, so they, they stay busy then. Yeah, okay, excellent. Okay, so that's kind of the, the actual road repair, road maintenance. Um, what, what, other, what other services does your team provide for the community? Uh, we also provide all the traffic control and miscellaneous needed things for all the special events within the city that are city sponsored. So for the tomato festival that's mm -hmm. coming up, uh, there'll be the people that are out there putting the ballards in, removing the ballards, placing light towers, no parking it. Okay, so, so it's a little variety of things they, that they do. It's not just all pothole and crack seal and trench paving all the time. How about the equipment? You know, I imagine a lot of this type of work uh, requires um, some specialized equipment. Is that equipment that we the city own or is that stuff that we rent or that we pay someone else to do for us? No, the city owns all their equipment, all of our equipment, and it's the best in the industry. It's top notch. Okay. Um, you couldn't ask for better equipment or tools. Yeah. They take very good care of. So w what are some of those types of equipment? Rollers, backhoes, pavement grinders, tractors, lots of trucks, lots of trucks to bring people and materials to it. Mm -hmm. out of the way. Big, big trucks and, and just, you know, sort of a big light duty, right? Big trucks, little trucks, jackhammers, shovels, rakes. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, because so, sometimes when I'm out driving, uh, you know, early in the morning around town, I'll, I'll, I'll see someone out there and, you know, they're, they're driving down the street with the backhoe and behind yeah. them is the dump truck. And so they're, they're going to some job site mm -hmm. where they're going to be, you know, doing yeah. some, some repair work. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Excellent. For, for our residents out there, um, if they see something, you know, say they see a pothole forming or out on their street, they see a crack forming and they want to report that to us, uh, is there any way, how, how would they go about doing that? Yeah, they can use the myfairfield.ca app okay. uh, and that'll get over to us and then we'll make a work order and have it assessed. Or they can also call the office number below. All right, Dan, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Uh, and once again, for Talk Around Town, I'm David Gassaway. We'll see you next time. To view more programs like this, follow the City of Fairfield on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook.